All right, so let's get to work here. X squared times x to the third. If you know what it is, I don't really care if you know what it is. I want you to know why it is that way. Okay, so we're going to look at that. All right, so let's start with what it is. What is, what is x squared times x to the third? X to the fifth. Okay, x to the fifth. Well, I suppose we should start with my first question. What does it mean to write? Well, first, how do you say this? Four to the fifth. Four to the fifth. Not four, five. Okay. Uh, and this isn't x2 and x3. Okay. Actually, x2 would look like this. Okay, so be careful. If you say x2, I will make you correct yourself. I will, I will be nitpicky about it. Okay. We have words that we use and they mean specific things. So this is four to the fifth power. Four to the fifth. Uh, four raised to the fifth power, uh, all those things are acceptable. Four five, or four and a little five above the four, not the way we say that. Four to the fifth, four raised to the power of five. What does it mean? Four times four times four times four times four times okay, it means, let's be real specific here, uh, five factors, why factors? What's up? Why is this word factors used? Not multiples, not summands, not multiples, not multiples. Factors. What does factor mean? What? What? Multiply by itself? By itself? By something. By another yeah. number. It's a number that you multiply by another number. That's a factor. A factor is a number that you multiply by another number. And we have four factors of four. We're four times four times four times four times four. When you multiply things together, you call them factors. Okay. So, four is a factor of four to the fifth because you multiply four by all that. All right, so four factors of four. And I, or five factors of four. So I say five factors of four rather than four times itself five times because I think that's a little bit weird and confusing. And if you agree, then we are kindred spirits. If not, then we aren't. <laughs> all right, so how do you know this is x to the fifth? How do you know? times x, and this is x times x times x, and what are we doing with x times x and x times x times Multiply. x? Multiply. So it's just a string, it turns out, of x's that we're multiplying together. How many? Well, there's two here, and there's three more there. We learned in, in first grade that is basic addition. There's, you have two apples, three apples together, and there's five apples, right? Now, they're, they're not being added together to be multiplied, and the notation that we use for that is a number up in the, what we call the superscript, Super means above. Okay, so x to the fifth means we're multiplying five factors of x together. <coughs> so yes, indeed, if we do have two numbers that have the same base, this is the base. Right? Both those things are the base. Okay, then we're going to add their exponents or powers. Exponents or powers is both acceptable. And we don't add them because we were taught by so-and-so that that's what we're supposed to do or that's what we do. We add them because there's two of them, there's another three of them, we're multiplying them together, there's a total of five factors that we need to multiply together. Okay. So if we were to use that, that idea, that adding idea, what would this be? M to the fourth times M to the fifth would be M to the ninth. M to the ninth. Not because we know that, not because we remembered it, but because there's four factors of M, five factors of M. You know, there's four plus five factors of M, so nine factors of M. All right. How about R to the sixth over R to the fourth? What does that turn out to be? R to the second. R to the second power. Okay, let's put that at the end. R second. Okay. And in this step, you're going to try and justify that. Okay. Um, so if we write it out, we got R times R times R times R times R times R in the numerator. Right? 
And in the denominator, we have r times r times r times r. Okay. Now, I haven't drawn a line here. I've done that on purpose because okay, I want to show you exactly what happens here. We could write these as their own individual fractions. Do you agree? Can you agree to that? Because if we multiply fractions, how do we multiply fractions? Straight across. So if we multiply the numerator straight across, we get six factors of r, r to the sixth. And if we do the denominators too, we multiply the denominator straight across, we get r to the fourth. Right. But this fraction right here is equal to what? One. One. Anything divided by itself, r divided by r, m divided by m, 12 divided by 12 is one. So we have one times one times one times one. And now we don't have any more to like, pair up. So we're left with two factors of r. Okay, so we had six factors of r. We were able to cancel out four of those factors. So six minus four, we have r squared. Okay. So just like we have the, the multiplying uh, the, the two things together that have the same base, we add their exponents, we divide them, we subtract the exponents. Kind of makes sense. Okay, if we use the same kind of an idea, we don't need to write this out every time and justify it, but we know that there's eight factors of Q up here, three factors of Q down here, three of those factors are get canceled out, leaving how many? Five, five factors. And we write it, Q to the fifth, five factors of Q. All right. If you're multiplying them together, we add, dividing, we subtract. Like, even if I forgot this justification, which I really hope you don't, by justification, I mean like this and this. But at least there's this like, okay, multiply, add, divide, subtract. There's this nice little um, tight package that goes together there. Okay? So if we take y to the second and raise that to the third, y to the sixth, y to the sixth can we justify that? Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, y times y three times? y times y is what y squared is. Okay? That's what y squared is. Means. All right. What are we doing with that? We're multiplying it by itself three times. So we got one, two, three groups of two, right? All the way back to first or second grade multiplication. That's how we said it, like all the time, right? Three groups of two is what three times two means. Three times two. So three groups of two, three times two, that's six factors of y all together. So we take t to the fourth, that's four factors of t, seven times. What do we have? t to the? I'm going to make that look more like the letter t. <coughs> so when we multiply two uh, things, two things together that have the same base, we add their exponents. When we divide things that have the same base, we subtract their exponents. And when we raise uh, a, a number that is being exponentiated, we raise that to another power, and then we multiply the powers together. Okay? What I hope is that there's, there's not any mystery. There's not any, do I multiply these together? Do I add them together? There's no need to call that from memory. You just define m to the fourth and m to the fifth. Maybe just kind of mentally, you're like, oh, well, there's just four there and five there, so I'll give them those nine factors. Right? Add them together. <coughs> okay. So we're going to use these properties as three properties of exponents, uh, three basic properties, and use them to explain some more properties of exponents. Okay? Like something raised to the zero or something raised to a negative power. So I like to, to make stories in my head. It makes it a little more fun and interesting. Uh, so I figure one day some guy was multiplying a bunch of fours together or something, and was multiplying lots of fours together. He was getting tired of writing all these fours. So I'm going to create a shorthand for this. So I don't have to write it down so much, but I know what I need. Right? So instead of writing five factors of four, he's like, I'm going to shorthand this. Nobody's used this superscript for anything really uh, uh, yet, so I'm going to write a 5 up there. That means 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, right? So he's doing that, and he's using these positive numbers up here in the superscript. And then one day somebody comes along and says, well, 
What if you raise it to the zero? That's not something you would think to do, usually, right? If you're just trying to shorthand multiplying a bunch of factors of four together. Um, so this guy's got to ask himself, what does that mean? Can it work? Because there's other things that don't work. Dividing by zero. You can't divide by zero. Right? Uh, but can you raise a number to the zero power? So let's find out. Um, this guy looks into it. Says, okay, what, what would something to the zero power be? Does anybody know what a number to the zero power is? Just from memory. One. It's one. It's defined as one. Okay. Anybody have a way of justifying that? Somebody asked you, why is something to the zero one? Why isn't it a? Why isn't it just a to the zero is, is a? Or why isn't it uh, zero? Why isn't it a to the zero? I'm just like no factors of a? Why is it it's just nothing? Why isn't it just zero? Because it's just that number. Like if you're not raising anything, it's just that number that's there. So if it's just that number, then why isn't it a instead of one? And a to the one is a, right? A to the one is just that, whatever a is. Two to the one is two, five to the one is five. So five to the one is five, five to the zero is one, and so is six to the zero is one, and a hundred to the zero power is one. Why? Anybody have any kind of explanation that makes them sleep better? You haven't lost sleep over this. It's probably off. Not really sleep over this. But we should answer the question: what is it to the zero? Why is it one? Why is it one? Okay, so we're gonna use this property right here, this dividing property and subtracting exponents, to at least convince ourselves. Not really a proof, but it's it's convincing. Okay? So let's take a to the fifth. We'll start with that. And we'll divide it by a to the first power. I just write a as the first one. So what's that going to be? A to the fourth. A to the fourth. Let's say five minus one. Or there's five factors of a here. One of them gets canceled out. We're left with four factors of a. Uh, a to the fifth divided by a squared would be. A to the third. Got a to the third. We got five factors of a. Two factors of a. Two of them canceling out. We're left with three factors of a. Let's jump up to a to the fourth, okay. will that be a to the what? A Just a, a to the first or a? All right, so you can see this pattern, we get four, three, if we had done this one in between, we get two, now one. All right. So when you do a to the fifth, divided by a to the fifth, okay. so that's gonna be a to the what power? Zero. Zero, five minus five, the zero power, but what is a number divided by that same number. One. It's one. Okay. So that's at least something that can help us sleep better. A to the fifth or a to the fifth would be a to the zero, but a to the fifth or a to the fifth would also be the number one. And we can do that with with any a, right? Any number. And we could let this be any power. We can start with a to the sixth or a to the fourth or or whatever. To get a to the zero. We would just put a to the whatever over a to that same thing, get a to the zero, but also one. Okay. So the, the truth of this is, the interesting thing that I learned in college, really, is, and this is true of a lot of things in math, a to the zero, a number to the zero, is one, because it has to be one. When we think about a to the second power, well, that's a times a. That makes sense. Two factors of a. Even a to the one. That's one factor of a. Times one, okay, that makes sense that it's a. When you raise it to the zero, there's not really a way to think of no factors of a being multiplied together. It's weird, okay? So we, we see here, if we want all those properties that we just discussed to continue to be true, then a to the zero would have to be equal to one because we've created a scenario here where it would have to be equal to one, right? There's lots of other things in math that need a to the zero, or a number to the zero power to be equal to one. Otherwise, they don't work, okay? So a to the zero is one. So let's keep going with this, with this pattern of dividing a to the 
exponents by something to look at what negative exponents are. Okay. So we'll keep going. We'll let the power of this keep getting bigger. A to the fifth over A to the sixth. Well, let's write it out and see what we get, and then we'll look at what the exponent would be. A times A times A times A. Okay, that's five factors of A. And then A times A times A times A times A times another A. And these cancel out, and then we're left with a factor of A in the denominator. So what is this? Zero yeah, Not the exponent, but like the fraction. What's the fraction? Zero over one. Zero over one? Yeah. Zero over one. Why zero? What's why is zero, zero over A? Zero over why is it zero up here? There's a one A, there's nothing there, but when we divide A by A we get one. One times one times one times one times one. 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 That's not times zero, okay? One. Times one. So one oh. over a, a final remaining factor of A. There we go. If we go the other way, or if we look over here and look at the exponent, what would the exponent be? A to the what? Negative one. We take five minus six. We we follow this pattern. Five minus one is four. Five minus two is three. Five minus four is one. Five minus five is zero. Five minus six is negative one. A to the negative power. A to the negative one is equal to one over a. Let's see if we can continue to notice the pattern. A to the fifth over a to the seventh. So one way of looking at it is five factors of a. I'm going to do this one more time. Over seven factors of a. Okay, these five cancel each other out, and we're left with two factors of a in the denominator of the fraction. So we get one over a squared. If we look at the exponent, it would be a to the negative two. Five minus seven is negative two. So would you say a to the negative second? What do you say? Uh, negative second is fine. I would, if I was talking to myself, which I often do, I'd say a to the negative two. Okay. Um, we start to see what seems to be a pattern between negative exponents and what number they would actually represent. Like what would five to the negative three, what would that be? One over a to the third. Or one over five to the third. A is five, so five to the third. Can we figure out what five to the third is? Seventy-five. Five times five is twenty-five. Twenty-five times five. Well four times twenty-five is a hundred, and another twenty-five would be one twenty-five. So one over a hundred. So this is some shorthand for one over five to the third, which is the actual number that that is, is one over, 20, one over 125. So in general, a to the negative something power, that's weird, like it's as weird as a to the zero. I have negative, what, like negative two factors of a, that is, I don't know. Two factors of A, three factors of A, four factors of A, all these positive numbers make sense. Zero, okay, I've made my piece with that. Negative, if I leave it as a negative exponent, that might work for you know writing it down on a paper so that it's shorter to write. But what that number actually is, we want to represent it with a positive exponent. We want to put it in as simple terms as possible. So how would I write this using a positive exponent? Just follow the pattern here. Written with a positive exponent, written with a positive exponent, written with a positive exponent. One over a to the m power. Yeah, so this just this is like over one. All numbers can be assumed to be over one, and now it moves into the denominator. There's a a property for you. Here's another property. We've got these other properties, a to the m times a to the n 
equal to a to the m plus n, a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n, uh, a to the m to the n is equal to uh, a to the m times n. Those are the first few properties we just really kind of remembered and justified. We got the zero power, we got negative powers. What if that, so this is where a to the negative power is in the numerator, what if it's in the denominator? <coughs> what do we make of that? application of this property. We can write this as 1 over a to the m. That's what a to the negative m is, right, by this property. Write this as 1 over a to the m, multiplied by the reciprocal, multiply 1 by the reciprocal, and 1 over a to the m, we get a to the m. And we don't have to write it over 1, if we don't want to. And if we're Deal with those negative exponents. We'll, we'll do it out long, and then we'll notice like maybe a little pattern uh, that we can utilize, make everything else shorter to do. Okay, so what's y to the negative four? How would I represent y to the negative four? But it's just its own little problem. One over y to the fourth. One over y to the fourth. Okay, so I'll do that over here. X squared times one over y to the fourth. That's in the numerator. A to the third times one over b to the third. Well, if we multiply these two together, we can think of this as over 1, and this is over 1. We get x squared over y to the fourth, over a to the third, over b to the third. So we're now dividing a fraction by a fraction, which we really don't want to do. How do we make that division of the problem easier? Divide by fraction. Yeah, I'll multiply by b. b to the, just multiply by b to the third. If we're divided by fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. Don't divide by this, multiply by its reciprocal. So x squared over y to the fourth times b to the third over a to the third. That's the reciprocal a to the third over b to the third. And we multiply straight across, we get x squared times b to the third over y to the fourth times a to the third. <coughs> so if we were to look at the beginning, jump all the way to the end, what does it look like? y to the negative 4 is in the numerator, we move it to the denominator. As long as everything's being multiplied together, right? As long as we don't have addition and subtraction involved. We're multiplying everything together. This guy can move down here. This guy is a negative exponent, so it can move up here. Okay. So negative exponents means I don't want to be where I am. I want to be, if I'm in the numerator, in the denominator. If I'm in the denominator, I want to be in the numerator. And it's just that the number that's raised to the negative exponent moves you know, from numerator to denominator, denominator to numerator. There's no switching. They're not trading places with anything else. They're just moving. Right. Um, I don't like just giving you these rules, but also I just 
just don't think it's realistic that you're going to do this every time. If you did, though, you'd find that that, that just happens every time. Okay. The numbers that are raised to the negative exponent are going to be in the denominator up here. These are going to be in the denominator down here. We'll find the reciprocal. Everything just kind of trades places. All the negative exponents just trade places. All right. So knowing what we know, use in practice. Find some expressions. Let's write that down and work on it individually. Okay. Well, let's just do something that we know is okay to do and write it. Write the next step. Write the next. Don't worry about getting everything done at once. Don't worry about looking at it and like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. As in all of the steps, you just do one thing at a time. And there's probably going to be you know three or four main ways maybe that, that if I looked at all your papers right now, I would see probably three or four different approaches that you know you, you, know, you fall into one of those four categories. So there's lots of different ways. Do it. So when you ask me, am I supposed to do this? Should I do this? All that kind of stuff. I'm going to say that. You know, are you allowed to do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, move forward. Do that and move forward. So what is something that we can do that, that follows the properties we've just learned? Slash review. Take the negative negative Move it. Move it up. Okay. Move it up. So here's one way that we can start. So 3c <coughs> cubed times, well, there's a d that's in the numerator, times this d that's moving up to the numerator as well, and 9c. That was a property that we, that we just learned about with negative exponents. They can switch where they are to go to where they're not. And let's just safely assume that we could write d squared and no one would be thrown for a loop there. times c squared times d squared over, well this 9 divided by 3 is 3, c divided by c is 1, so we just get a 3. There's, there's only one place where we see a base of c, there's a base of d, no other d bases anywhere else, we got all the numbers simplified as much as possible, there's no negative exponents, there it is, it's all simplified. <coughs> I, I want you to be careful here. So here's something that I see sometimes, and just try really hard to avoid this, because if you were to just take what I said as like the absolute truth, like the properties that we talked about, what I've said, it would not justify this step here. A lot of times what I see is if there's a, a something to the negative one, and then there's something with the same base up there. This is what happens a lot for some reason, 3c cubed. So they just switch them, just flip them to position trade. Okay, so this d comes up here, and then somehow that d comes down here. Okay. It's not a trading, the switching, it's just that d to the negative one is the denominator. We could justify bringing d to the negative one up to the numerator as d to the positive one. Don't worry about switching, trading places, anything like that. Did anybody do anything else different as a first step? So everybody did? Just move the D to the negative one? Pretty common first step. I, I 
want you to just see something and realize the reason why we can cancel things out is because we can break them into their own little fractions. We can make this like the number fraction times the C fraction times the D fraction. We can split them up however we want. We can have 3 over C, right? Bring the C over here, and C to the third over 9. That is not convenient. It's not a convenient way to write it. Okay? And each one of these, they all have the same bases, right? And we can start uh, canceling out, simplifying that way. And we can put them all back together. And that the reason I bring it up is because there's just, just so many mistakes. I don't know, forever. It seems like forever, all the way up through all the maths that you might ever take, uh, there seems to always be this inability to simplify fractions. Okay? Try to cancel things out. They can't cancel out because they're not common factors. They're, they don't work that way. All right? So we'll talk about that more as we move along. But now it's pretty safe to cancel things out because we've we written it in such a way that they can't. jump into it, I just want to bring to your attention two more properties that aren't, I think they're very amazing properties. But if we have, let's just start with a over b to the third. That can be written as a to the third over b to the third. Okay. And I don't want you to get mixed up and think, oh, I'm just distributing. It's like the distributive property. It's nothing like the distributive property. Okay. Um, if that's what sticks in your head, that's fine. I would say that's a hindrance and not a help. Okay, so let's justify this. Rather than saying we distribute the three power to everything, let's think of it like this. Well, what does it mean to raise something to the third power? By itself three times, right? Itself three times. Itself, the it that you're multiplying is this, A over B. So A over B times A over B times A over B. Well, if we multiply straight across, we get a times a times a, that's a to the third, and b times b times b, that's b to the third. So I don't think these properties are, are giving them names and, and, and writing them down in little boxes in our books makes them feel like more special than they actually are. If we left them out and we said these are properties, but just figure out what that would be, I kind of think that would be better. Okay? And that will work for any anything. Right? A over B to the M, just means we're going to multiply this uh, by itself M times, which means we'll get M factors of A and M factors of B. There we go. And the same thing works for a product. A times B to the third, well, multiply this by itself three times, so A times B times A times B times A times B. Well, multiplication is commutative, meaning that we, we can move these around, so we can put all the A's together and then put all the b's together. And so we get a to the third times b to the third. Three factors of a, three factors of b. a times b to anything would be a to that thing times b to that thing. So there's a couple more quote properties. This property will be one you can apply in this situation. Could, or maybe you don't, or you know, handle it however it makes sense to you the most. So, what is something that we can do first? It's probably two main opening moves. I think it was a chess game or something, but what's something we could do first? Yeah, this problem right here. <laughs> <laughs> this problem. Should I move your pawn forward? No, what, what's something that we can do first in this problem? What? Negative numbers? Yeah. 
So what you're saying is like 2 to the negative 3 is negative 8. No. What? No. No, you're not saying that. I don't know. <laughs> I just wrote this. Okay. So you're you're seeing the negative and you're trying to interpret the negative, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're trying to we're trying to interpret the negative and say this is what the negative exponent means. So Dakota has put negatives in front of the three and made it made it negative. Just like I was right. saying, if we did two to the negative three, it would be equivalent to doing negative two. What he's doing times negative two times yeah. negative two. Is that what that means? No. It could if if that's what we wanted that to mean, but it doesn't mean that. Okay. If I want this, if I want negative 2 multiplied by itself three times, I would just write this. There's negative 2 multiplied by itself three times. Uh, this means something else. Yeah. Okay. Probably the most common mistake made with negative exponents. I doubt Dakota's the only one in the room who did that. He's just the only one yeah, who was yeah. willing to share it. What? Let's see it. Okay. One over three. Oh, no. No. All right. So. Yeah. We could deal with the negative exponent or interpret that. We could do something else. Which, what, what's something we can do? <laughs> 20 people in here. Let's see if you've got an idea of what we could do. Oh. Even if you're wrong, it's okay. Okay, so take this exponent and give the exponent to everything. Yeah? Just like I said here. The exponent can be given to everything. Why? Because we can kind of justify it here. We're just multiplying this by itself that many times. We group together each factor, and it turns out you get that many factors of that yeah. uh, of that factor. So we just give this negative three to everything. Now here's a, a another mistake that happens a lot. I'll write it correctly right now. Okay. So this property says that every factor gets that exponent. Okay. Correctly written, it looks like this. So now I've, I've applied this property. Okay, what you might have done, what you might have done, what quite a few of you probably did if this is what you attempted, was you got three a to the negative nine and b to the negative fifteen because you just moving too quickly multiplied this by every exponent that you saw. The thing you forgot though is that three has an exponent of one. Three is its own factor. So it should also get us an exponent of negative three. Okay, so now we'll keep going with this. Those are not equal, they're not correct. This is three to the negative three, a to the negative nine, b to the negative 15. times three is three to the third. Okay. Three to the third is three times three times three. Minus three. Minus three. Minus three. Okay. Three to the negative three we're saying is this negative twenty seven? It's not. This negative in the exponent has nothing, 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 not a thing to do with whether or not the answer is positive or negative. Nothing. It has nothing to do with it. What does that negative in the exponent actually mean? Yeah. Um, give it to me and let's see. Okay, so this, yes, 3 to the negative 3 does not mean negative 27. It means 27 in the denominator. This means in the denominator or, you know, in the other place. If it's in the denominator, you'd want it to be in the numerator. But it's in the numerator right now, it needs to be in the denominator. That's what negative exponents kind of mean. It means this is actually a number in the denominator of a fraction. Okay? 
So we've got 27 in the denominator, right? 3 to the third is 27. The negative means it's in the denominator. Not that it's a negative number, but that it's in the denominator. Okay. So being reminded of that, what's something we could do next? This guy down here too. This one as well. What's left in the numerator? One. One, one not zero. One. And that's it. Right? That's all we can do. Um, as an alternative, we could, you know, we gave this this power of negative three to every factor. That definitely is a property. Uh, also, we could just address that negative exponent right from the beginning. Negative exponent means actually in the denominator. So we could write it as 3a to the third, b to the fifth, now to the positive third. Okay. And then do the same thing, give everything in there, every factor an exponent of 3, carry it out to its ultimate conclusion, and still get the same thing. So number 27 times a to the ninth times b. When you come to class next time and I have a homework quiz, I can guarantee you this mistake will be on the homework quiz. Taking something to a negative power being a negative number, not true. They are not. Negative powers do not mean negative numbers. They mean I'd like to be moved to the denominator or be moved to the numerator only if I'm the denominator to start with. Okay. Let's feel like Go ahead and do the homework, and you know what? You're going to be wrong. And you're going to fix it, and it's going to be awesome. And you're going to feel accomplished. Okay. You feel like you're ready to take it, attempt the homework, and when you see that you're wrong, be able to go back and say, oh, I see what I was supposed to do. You feel like you're ready to do that, or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. I can guarantee it. It's the most significant part of learning. Remember, we don't want to live in Wally Land where nothing ever bad happens. We just stay on the lighted path in our hover chairs. Take us to our liquefied steaks. We don't want that. <coughs> All right. We're going to jump over 5.2. This was 5.1. We're going to jump into 5.3. Okay. To me, it's a much more smooth, natural transition. Then we'll go back to 5.2. This is number seven in the homework set. Three s third plus s plus four s third squared. Now I think. You guys have all the skills, I know you have all the skills to make this happen. Dare to possibly be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. You can do this without me telling you exactly what to do. So I want you to just go for it, see what you get. All right, so we are supposed to apparently take this stuff and add this stuff. What's the purpose of the parentheses? If there was an exponent, okay, that would be something. That would mean the parentheses is supposed to be multiplied by itself some number of times. Okay, we don't have that. So maybe go with that. What what things might be acting on the parentheses which would require some parentheses? If we put the parentheses in an exponent, okay, there, that's why the parentheses are there. That's another re reason you might put parentheses around something. Okay. If instead of being addition, it was subtraction. Okay, if you want to subtract this thing, now this whole uh, parentheses, that would be different. Okay. That would be important to have the parentheses around that if that's what you want to have happen. Uh, it's very much similar to that if we had like a five 
from the outside of the parentheses, and we're going to multiply everything by 5. Right? So the question remains, what is the purpose of the parentheses here? Any? Not really any. There's not really any purpose to it. There's not anything I'm supposed to do. There's no exponent here. There's no uh, coefficient outside here. I'm not dividing it by anything. There's, there's just nothing acting on the parentheses other than a positive one multiplier out here, which doesn't change anything. So really, kind of no point to the parentheses. Kind of slow. I was trying to really concentrate on my S's. Okay. Um, now that we realize there's no, no point to the parentheses, are we, are we done? Can we do anything here? Okay, a like term. What's a like term? Mean? Like if I look at this, does this have any like terms? Yeah. What, what like terms does it have for us? Why are they like terms? S to the third. They're both. S, right? They're not S and Q or something, so they got the same variable. And they're S to the third. They're like terms, right? So let's let's break that out over here. Three S to the third plus four S to the third. Very similar to the way we justified, uh, you know, m times m to the second times m to the third times m to the fifth. Well, three S to the third just means S to the third plus S to the third plus S to the third. This three out. In front is shorthand for adding a bunch of s to the thirds together. Right? And what is this? This is just s to the third plus s to the third plus s to the third plus a fourth s to the third. We're adding them all together. Right? Three groups of s to the third, four groups of s to the third, a total of seven groups of s to the third. Okay. So it's not 7s to the sixth, or 7s to the ninth, or anything like that. Right? The exponent of s wouldn't change here because we're not multiplying s uh, by other s's. We're just adding them all together. Right? So these two, 7s to the third, when you combine like terms, I like to cross them out just so I'm sure that I have done them. All of the, those s to the thirds got put together. I don't use them more or less than I'm supposed to. Right? What can I write next? Minus, Minus, Minus what? 2s to the second. Okay, that's the only s squared term there is around, so we're done with that. Next. 7s plus s. 7s plus s, that's 8s. Those are used. 10 is the only constant, you can't put it together with another constant, it doesn't exist. There we go. All the light terms are combined. Yeah, I thought that was a 5 too. Uh, what? I thought that was a 5. Oh, you thought that was a 5? I'm yeah. sorry. I told you. I don't know how to write my s's or my fives. It's just both set an s or a five all day. I really don't know. So, I mean, what are the fundamental elements of that s that make it look like a five? The end that little curve. Curves. Little curve. Yeah. Yeah. Which curve? Usually, s is like a snake. Yeah, and usually some people that don't have like the top part. So, it's, so that makes it hard to know. You know so you think somebody saying this yeah. makes it look like a five? Or we just they all kind of look like fives. Yeah. Make your this. make your fives. Especially like the one next block. to the seven that looks really like, like five. Make it more. Well, well okay, that makes a five look like a five, but what makes an S look like not a five? There are right a five. Well, you made it. Yeah, write a five. Well, that, like that just leads to you know the difference between my fives and s's. Yeah, right. But how can I write an s so that anyone in the world will say that's an s? Make it. Make it. Let me see your five. Yeah, that's your five. So it's still it's still a five. Is it? That's my question. That's a five. Hey, that's not the problem. I can make a five look like a five. How do I make an s not look like a five? Z's are good. Z, I could do that. It's not a two, that's a Z. That looks like a two. No, it's a That looks exactly like a two. Okay, but how do I make an S not look like a five? Can I make a curl more? Draw a snake. That's all I was going to say. I've got two minutes for every S. For now, I'll just apologize that my S's do look like five. Okay, these are all S's. 
Except for that five. Okay. So we have put it together. We have combined like terms. We have added two things. Okay. What two things have we added? These two things. This thing and this thing. Okay. So the purpose of the parentheses is really to show you we're adding two things together. These two things are called polynomials. We've had monomials. We've had binomials. We've had trinomials. And our polynomials, what are a, what's a polynomial? Many. Isn't that four terms? Many. Number. That'd be a quad. No, no. Poly just means many. Mm -hmm. And nomial means number, right? Many numbers. Poly, poly meaning many, number meaning here's a number, there's a number, that negative is part of it. There's another one. There's another. We call all of these guys terms. This is a term, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term. 3s cubed is a term, s is a term. Negative 2s squared is a term. Okay? And the numbers in front of the variables, like this one, what's that called? Coefficient. 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 What's the coefficient of s squared? Negative 2. Negative 2. OK. So there's some of the quick basics about polynomials. Right? In a polynomial, you'll always have some number times some variable to some power. Okay. The important thing is this is the variable. Okay. These other numbers will be numbers. There's not a variable up here, not a variable here. We're not defining by a variable. We got a number times a variable raised to a power, a positive power. Okay. Even technically a zero power. This is 10 times s to the, what's the power of s here? Zero. Yeah, this is the this is the power of one. This is the power of zero. S to the zero. What's something to the zero equal to? Oh, one. One. Ten times one is ten. Okay. And we continue on. That's a big answer. Let's So in the previous one, I asked you what's the purpose of the parentheses, and it turned out there wasn't really any reason for the parentheses to be there. But here, is there a reason for the parentheses to be there? Yes, we want to subtract not just that, because here's what happens a lot of times. That's why I say this. We get this, and then nothing else changes, right? <coughs> if the guy who wrote this, okay, you got to think about his feelings and his emotions. If he, if he wrote this this way, Right? There is, there's a meaning to it. If he, what he wanted you to do was su just subtract this thing, you wouldn't have put parentheses there. Right? We use parentheses for a reason, whether we're writing an English sentence or in math or whatever. Parentheses mean these things go together, and I, I want you to do something with all this stuff. Okay? And in this case, all this stuff you want to have subtracted. Right? So I want to subtract this. I also want to subtract this. Okay, so let's erase these. I'm going to subtract all these things. Subtract a 4a squared. Subtract a negative 12a, which is add 12a. Subtract a 4 minus 4. Okay. okay. So that's one way of looking at it. We're just subtracting everything, every piece of it. Okay. What property did we just use? Distributive property. Distribute the negative one that's being multiplied by this set of parentheses. Okay. And now it's like the one we just did, right? It just had one more step to start with. We distribute the negative. So let's get negative a cubed. Uh, then we got two a squared minus four a squared. Uh, what is this? Keep track of what we've done so far. We've got just. 1a term, so 12a by itself, and then negative 8 minus 4, negative 12. Wait, so it's a negative or turn to a positive? This one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Distribute that negative to the entire parentheses, and then you know, do it. Whatever it says to do, do that. So 
what we've done here is we've uh, simplified. That's one way to say it. Simplified the expression. We have uh, subtracted a polynomial. Um, polynomial. We've uh, combined like terms, and we can say it in all sorts of different ways. One way that we definitely want to recognize that we subtracted a polynomial from the polynomial. Here again is a polynomial, many numbers, and here is a polynomial. That polynomial is actually a binomial. If you had to give this one a name, you'd call it what? Um, a what? Oh, quad. 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 You can call it a quadnomial or a fournomial. Or, okay. <laughs> uh, same thing, we got a binomial and a, and a quadnomial. You want to call it that. In general, they all fit into the category polynomial. Okay. So we added, added two polynomials. We subtracted two polynomials. Now we'll multiply polynomials, and we won't divide polynomials. Not yet. You can do what you cannot divide polynomials. Huh? <laughs> I guess I got a strawberry. She didn't like strawberries. I was really just upset about it. Oh. <laughs> Weird, I know. Okay, so I won't have you multiply two binomials together because that should be kind of child's play by now. Because that's where you take one factor of a quad, uh, quadratic and another factor of quadratic and you multiply them together by it in standard. So that would be a binomial times a binomial. So we'll, we'll, we'll step it up a little bit from there. Um, uh, number 20 is a little bit more challenging than that. Plus 4 times w squared plus 6w times 11. All right, so this is where unlearning that FOIL uh, acronym is going to serve us well. There's, FOIL is not it, right? FOIL is only for binomials times a binomial. Here, we're just going to recognize it as we've been recognizing it, hopefully, as how do we multiply this thing times the parentheses? What's the, I'm just looking for one word. Distributive. The distributive property, yeah. But I guess that's three words. Distributive, we distribute. The distributive property. Okay? So, I'm going to write this out kind of long and maybe overthinking it and then just make a, a point about it. So if I were to take, for instance, okay, multiply this not by w plus 4, but multiply it by the number 5. How would I multiply this by the number 5? It's 5 times everything that's distributed property says. So we take it, multiply it by everything in the parentheses. Okay. So same here, we take this number, this is a number, w plus 4 is a number, and we're going to distribute it to everything in that parentheses. Okay. So we get w plus 4, just like we get 5w squared, we get w plus 4, w squared, plus w plus 4 times 6w, plus w plus 4 times negative 11, or negative See, w oh my God, what? I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Huh? I didn't. Yeah. Okay, good, good. All right, so this, now this thing has been distributed to every single term, okay? Now, we can see a little more clearly, what if I want to multiply this by that parenthesis? distribute it into the parentheses. That's how we multiply parentheses. We distribute that thing into the parentheses, right? So here's the point I'm making. This is not the way I would recommend writing this every time, okay? Unless you like it. If you like that, then you should do it, okay? Um, so you can see what's happening is everything in here is going to get multiplied by everything in here, right? W squared gets multiplied by everything in here. 6w gets multiplied by everything in here. We're just going to distribute it into there. We're going to take negative 11, distribute it to both of the terms in there. 
okay? As long as everything in one set of parentheses gets coupled up with everything in the other parentheses, and all those couples, all possible couples are made, or pairings, or whatever, are made, and we multiply those pairings together, we've done it. We've distributed it in one parentheses into the other correctly. However that makes sense to you, go for it. If you like taking that parentheses and then just distributing the whole thing to each term, I think that's great because it really, dis it really displays the distributive property at work. Okay? But we can also, we'll just set this aside, we can also recognize that what winds up happening is simply every possible pair gets made. Okay. So let's make every possible pair. Hmm. I'll show you the way that I do it every time and have done it for years and therefore I believe it's like a really simple way to do it. Not the best and right way, but a pretty good way. So all I have to do is pair W with everything in here and 4 with everything in here. Or it could go the other way, W squared with everything and, and so on. But left to right is nice. So multiply W times W squared. That pair has to get made. W times W squared is W to the third. Okay. Then that pair has to get made. W with six W, so that's six W squared. W with negative 11, that's negative 11 W. Okay. So what have I done so far? Distributed, distributed the W. Distributed the W, okay. So W is done, it's been used up, we've distributed it. This job is finished, so what do we move on to now? Four needs to be distributed. Alright, so four. Moving on to four. Four W squared. And the four gets distributed to the next thing. Twenty-four W. And the four gets distributed to the next thing, minus forty-four. And now look we've done. We've taken both of those things in the left parentheses, distributed each of those to all the three things in the right parentheses. And every possible pair has been multiplied together, and that was the whole idea. If you like this more, do it that way. If you like some other way, as long as you make every possible pair, that is what matters. But for me, actually drawing these lines, these arches, from, from this to each of the terms, uh, makes sure that I get every possible pair, and then I don't go back and do it again. I don't do a pair twice. Once all those arches have been made and all those pairs have been multiplied, I know that I'm done with the distribution part and now I just have the combining like terms part. So W to the third, that's the only W to the third term, so I'll be done with that and move on. Uh, next we can do the square terms. So 6W squared and 4W squared, that's 10W squared. And then those are done. Got W terms here, 24W minus 11W is 13, yeah, 13W, minus 44, yeah. Just in case you were wondering, I don't want you to think that, that this other option would be wrong. You could write these in any order you want, because they're just being added together. The order does not matter. It could be 10W squared plus, or, or plus W cubed plus 13W minus 44. It could be in any order you want. Okay. Oh, why might we choose this order as like the standard way to write a polynomial? What's the logic behind it? Uh, go from the exponents. The exponents. Print the biggest exponent first and then on, you know, all the way down. So the third to the second to the first to the zero, right? So it's W to the zero over here. So work your way down. It's just traditional, it's kind of a standard way. It's not the only correct way to write that polynomial, but it is a standard way. <coughs> okay. So something else about polynomials. So this is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. Okay. Uh, this is this is a degree three polynomial. This is what do you mean degree three? Degree. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, what degrees of polynomials are and see if there's a connection. Okay. This is a second degree. This is a first degree. Let's look at some other one. This one is a third degree. This one's a third degree. 
This is the second degree. I got it. Third degree, third degree, third degree. Okay. So what's telling us the degree of the polynomial? The largest exponent. The largest exponent. The largest exponent tells us the degree. So when your book or a person maybe makes reference to the degree, you know that just means that the highest exponent of the variable that we're seeing. That includes polynomials that are written out of order, quote unquote out of order. Okay. Whatever the highest exponent is, you seek it out, you find it, that's the degree. Not just the first one on the left. Okay. Well, As you're writing that down, the last note I'll make, I don't think you need me to say, but you might appreciate it. So we can multiply any number of polynomials together that we want. Two, we've done two so far. We can do three, we can do four, we can do five. And to help you to see how we're going to do it, we're going to use numbers. Two times three times five. How do we multiply these numbers together? How do we multiply these three numbers together? Two times three yeah, 2 times 3, then that times 5, and we get 30. Or 2 times 5, and you get 10, multiply by 3, or 2 times 5, take that, multiply by 2. Multiplication is a binary operator. And that, this is how our brains work. You take two things, put them together, bring in the third thing, and put it with that thing. It's just how our brains do things. So if we were going to multiply, x plus 2 times x minus 6 times x plus 4. How would we do that? You can multiply these two together first and then multiply the result by that. You could multiply these two together first and multiply the result by x plus 2. You could multiply these two together first if you really wanted to, if you felt like there was some advantage to that. And then multiply the result by x minus 6. Whatever you want to do just group two, two of them together, multiply those together, take the result, multiply by the third parentheses, we've got a fourth parentheses, and then multiply the fourth one in, and so on and so on. That's awesome.